innovative pro wrestling fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. One in the Chamber was quite the debut, and everyone's still buzzing about this very show. Um, just before the action got underway, Commissioner Hulk Kim Morales comes out and said about a five-way invitational, innovational, invitational match. He announced it would now be a sensational six-way innovational, invitational match. I'm not going to say that three times fast. But the match was on as we saw Logan Black defeat Baron the Emperor, Jersey Muscle Jock Steve Gibke, the Black Cloud Joseph Black, Kyle the Beast, and Trigger the OG, who was known as a Tripolicious in Pro Wrestling Magic. Uh, Logan, when he came to the ring for the match, he grabbed Mike McNicholas, who was sitting at ringside, and walked around the ring with him. After the match was over, Logan said he was supposed to receive some type of a medal, and Logan was saying, you know, if anybody, I forgot what he, can't remember all this, but Logan got the win, and it's safe to say Logan will be around for the foreseeable future in IPW. Next up was a singles match, which saw the hitman for hire, Mr. Grimm, defeat Sugar Dunkerton. Dunkerton, Dunkerton entered the ring to uh, Cameo's Candy, which was a great hit from the mid-1980s. After winning the matchup, Mr. Grimm was, went to the briefcase and was going to pull out the body bag, but instead gave the crowd the double bird and left the ring. Next up, we saw Josh the Goods Woods go one-on-one -on -one with the pro wrestling maniac Joe Gacy in a pretty good matchup. Um, Joe Gacy defeated Josh Woods in a, to pick up the victory. Next up, we were scheduled for a six-man tag pitting Total Immortal against the Main State. Yes, the Main State Posse. Posse, but Commissioner Hokim Morales comes out and said he was going to add another three men to the match. And out came the Ugly Ducklings with their manager, Coach Mikey. Uh, Coach Mikey, he said that normally he doesn't wrestle, but he said because his grandmother is in the crowd, he was going to wrestle. Um, the main, the main state posse noticed his grandmother in the crowd, and all three of them proceeded to flip her the bird, and to the and she actually flipped the bird back to them. Uh, the match was on, uh, and definitely the uh, which saw the main state posse defeat totally mortal, and the trio of the ugly ducklings and Coach Mikey. I do apologize for not getting the individual names of all three members of main main state posse and all three members of totally mortal. Next up, we were scared to see. The um, Bayonne Badass, Dan Moff, go one-on-one -on -one with Hardcore King Nick Gage. Gage comes to the ring and said he was not medically cleared to wrestle. And said he would be back. And Gage introduced Moff's opponent, which was former WWE Cruiserweight Champion Rich Swan, who came to the ring to Lionel Richie's all night long. And uh, Swan gathered, gathered the crowd and formed what may, may, or, may or may not have been pro wrestling's first ever conga line. Aside from, from a few small children, aside, with the exception of a few small children, it was a bunch of guys having a cream fest. Swan eventually gets to the ring, and as the match goes on, Swan says to Moff, I want to see you dance. And... We're waiting for music to come on, and Swan, and then Lionel Richie's All Night Long starts playing, and Moff begins to dance a little bit. Swan proceeds to hit Moff with a super kick, but Moff doesn't budge. The crowd's chanting, you fucked up, and Moff screams real loud, you fucked up! The match continued, and uh, Rich Swan, surprisingly, to me anyway, surprisingly, defeated Dan Moff to pick up the victory. It was at that point they went to intermission... And many were out for meet and greet, much like before the show started. Uh, the, the action resumed with a triple threat matchup, which saw Trevor Eon, Ryo, and... Well, actually, Trevor Eon, 
accompanied the ring by Sylvia, did not get her last name, Trevor Eon defeated Ryo and Mitch Vallon. Mitch Vallon substituted for Damian... Yes, Mitch Vallon substituted for Damian Bennett, who apparently was unable to appear. Hopefully they'll get Damian Bennett in the future. Next up, uh, well, actually, right before the next match, Commissioner Hokim Morales comes out one more time and announces that the next matchup, that the rules of the next match, that there would be no rules. As we saw Clayton Gaines, or is it Clayton Jackson, team up with two Knight Riders. One Knight Rider was unable to make the show. And they took on the awakening of Stockade and G. Raver and their partner, Jessica Havoc. <sighs> Now, these six individuals really, uh, you know, were really wreaking havoc, no pun intended, to Jessica, all over the, all over the, as they brawled in the crowd, doors, brought doors into play, uh, Stockade did the Cactus Jack elbow off the stage onto uh, one of the Knight Riders, threw a door that was laying on two chairs. Um, eventually, all six of them took took the fight out the door onto Bergen Avenue. And most of the crowd went outside to watch them brawl for a few minutes. And I understand they even went into the actual street. Uh, somebody jumped off a car. and I didn't go out there myself, folks, because, you know, it was, it was chaotic with, the other, with all the crowd. And I could tell you, when everybody went out, when people went outside... The bill it got so quiet in the building. I would, you, anyone could have heard a pin drop. Uh, they eventually, I think, yeah, they eventually did come back inside. And I don't know if this happened before, or after they went outside. But Stockade used somebody's uh, uh, telephone, or he was t he, he spoke to somebody on someone's telephone, and. You and um, Lego, eventually, Stockade uh, took a bag of Lego blocks, poured them in the ring. Unfortunately, first Stockade, he was powerbombed on those aforementioned, aforementioned Lego, Lego blocks. And, um, God. Um, looking back, it's a good thing I didn't, looking back, it's a good thing I didn't go outside, because knowing Stockade, he would have used my megaphone on somebody. Eventually, uh, Stockade, Havoc, and Raver defeated Clayton and the Knight Riders to pick up the victory. Next up was a high-flying match, which saw Zachary Wentz go one-on-one -on -one with Teddy Hart. Uh, these two were up on the apron, and Zachary hit Teddy with, I think that's called a snap mare driver, on the apron. And unfortunately, neither man could get back in the ring, and they were both counted out. Next up was a triple threat women's hardcore match, which saw Maria Manic versus Vita Scott versus Harlow O'Hara. Now, in this very matchup, these ladies, they went into the crowd. They were using, um, they, they, they uh, brought a door into the ring, which Manic got super, double suplexed on. Uh, on uh, Harlow eventually brought a crutch into play. I believe she also used a brought a plunger into the ring. Manic had some wooden object in her hand. Uh, I think they went over to the pickup window and Harlow took a a whole water cooler full of ice and pour, poured it all over Manic. <laughs> you know, trying to get her to take the ice. I guess Harlow won Mac to take the ice bucket challenge four years too late. Yes. Oh, eventually, um, somebody grabbed the uh, uh, the garbage can. Uh, Maria Manic scooped up Vita Scott, put her head first into that garbage can, and then. And then uh, Matt, Manic at that point gave Vita a spanking. That's one for that was for all the fucking perverts in the building. Eventually, uh, Harlow 
after you eventually uses a crutch on on Manic, throws her out of the ring. Manic, as she goes out of the ring, she bumps bumps into and knocks down cameraman Danny Walsh. And Harlow, Harlow, I forgot what she did to Vita next, but she uh, scored the pinfall, winning to win the matchup. And then the main event it was the Swerve Man, Shane Strickland. He took on the pro wrestling savior, JT Dunn, in a great one-on-one matchup, which saw uh, JT Dunn defeat Shane Strickland to pick up the victory. Uh, after the match, JT took the microphone, said he'd like to have a match with Rich Swan. He also put over Strickland, saying that Strickland was the one who saw something in him years ago. Um, I forgot what else happened, but the um, thing is, Strickland... Uh, enters the ring to Chaka Khan's Ain't Nobody, and after Dunn got talking, Strickland, uh, Chaka Khan's Ain't Nobody starts playing, and you say, I noticed Strickland, Rich Swan, uh, Jessica Havoc, uh, Commissioner Hokim Morales comes out, as does JT Dunn comes back out with some of his t-shirts, and they're having a little dance, having a little, uh, you know, basically... A little, I guess a bit of a celebratory or victory dance over the success of the show. And even if some fans were like right around them joining in on the dancing. <laughs> Man. Rest her soul. My mom was a was was a fan of Chaka Khan. Especially her song I Feel For You, which featured a rapper. I forgot his name, but it is another another subject for another time. All right. Personal notes, it was great seeing Mike McNicholas, Bill Parham, the Cuban hype man, Bruno and Fernando, uh, Karen and her, and her sister Melanie, Matt Wolf, who's one of the uh, photographers at ringside. Yeah. Um, to show you how much of a great impre- impression this show was, uh, Hokim Morales, Christopher Beckett, take a look. Got a new divider added to the, added to the binder. And while I have your attention, gentlemen, Hokim and Christopher, uh, one thing I want to say first, I sure hope you do not run shows on Sundays during football season. And this may come out as an odd, not, not maybe an odd thing to say, possibly an odd question, but why not when when there's a, when wrestlers bring weapons into play, why not do that match right before an admission? That way, during an admission, the ring can get cleaned up. Because I did notice Christopher himself was um, Christopher himself came out. He helped to clean up the ring after the six person tag. And I don't know if he helped clean up. He also helped clean up after that triple threat uh, women's hardcore match. Women's hardcore match as well. Yes. We've got memorable quotes. Fix the mic. Fix the mic. The crowd at ring announcer Mark Adam Haggerty. Um, it sounded like he was having some trouble with the microphone near the beginning of the show. Don't be bashful. Rich Swan to the fans that he was forming the conga line. Did you wash your hands? Harlow O'Hara to Maria Manic when Manic wanted a test of strength with both Harlow and Vita Scott. No. Maria in response to Harlow. I have a cock. Vita Scott, who had who showed off a metal object, had a picture of a rooster on it during the women's triple threat hardcore match. Uh, there were uh, there were there were two pretty ladies sitting right next to me for this show. Hopefully they'll they seem to enjoy it. Hopefully they'll come back in the future. And speaking of which, 
Innovate IPW Innovative Pro Wrestling returns returns with To Hell and Back on Sunday, July 22nd from the Knights of Columbus in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. Jersey. Already announced for this show, Nick Gage going one-on-one with wrestling's richest prize, Darius Carter. Uh, Masada and Kimberly making their IPW debut. And... The first ever IPW Tag Team Champions will be crowned. Now, I would like to see on July 22nd, I'd like to see a return bout between Teddy Hart and Zachary Wentz. I'd like to see Maria Manic one-on-one with Harlow O'Hara since Maria did not get pinned in the Triple Threat Hardcore match. I will say, please bring back Sugar Dunkerton, Mitch Vallon, Damn. Yeah. Um. Oh, and bring back Josh the Goods Woods. <clears throat> um, I hope in the future uh, IPW or another promotion out there will have Dan Moff one on one with Nick Gage, even though they did wrestle each other at CZW back in 2004. Uh. Oh, another memorable quote. I forgot about all this. Oh, two more, actually. She's hardcore. She's hardcore. The crowd at Coach Mikey's grandma after she gave, after she flipped the bird back at the main state posse. Look at these marks. Referee Christopher Shady Torres, when he saw Mike McNichols and I come on the bus that was taking us back to New York City. Hmm. Oh, man. All right. But, yeah, a a very impressive debut for IPW. You know, the sky's the limit, as they say. And definitely, Ho Kim, Christopher, you two gentlemen, I'm sure you'll keep up the wonderful work. And definitely... Let's, I think, I truly think that, you know, to hell and back, which is Sunday, July 22nd. I mean, you got your work cut out for yourselves because one in the chamber will definitely be one tough act to follow.